Hey everyone, Ricardo here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a restricted earth fault element using the SCL487E protective relay. So the restricted earth fault element, or just simply known as the REF element, is a ground differential element. That is, a differential element that looks at the difference in zero sequence current in a protection zone. So unlike the phase differential element that we've talked about in previous videos, this one focuses on zero sequence current. Now in the case of the REF element for transformer protection, this zone of protection is between the neutral of a grounded transformer winding and the line side three phase CTs for that winding. Now since this element uses the zero sequence current, it can only be implemented when the winding of a transformer is grounded and its neutral is available so that we can measure the current flowing through it. Now, on top of this, this element only provides protection for a grounded transformer winding. So for example, if we had a transformer that has a delta connected high side winding, and a Y grounded connected low side winding, this element will only provide protection for the low side winding. Now, before we go deeper into how the REF element works in the SCL487E relay, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We always post videos here about power engineering and power system protection and control. And if you wanna learn more about power system protection and control, make sure to check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. We actually have a full transformer protection course where we go over the REF element that we're gonna be talking about in this video but also phase differential, volts per hertz, and overcurrent protection. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's see how we can implement an REF element using the SEL487E relay. So let's say that we have a substation like this where we have a DYN1 connected transformer. And what this connection type means is that the high side is connected in a delta configuration. So for example, this transformer over here, again, is going to be connected delta on the high side and the low side is connected in a Y configuration. And also for this type of connection, the high side leads the low side by 30 degrees. So again, this low side winding is connected in a Y and more specifically Y grounded configuration. Now for this example, we're gonna assume that the low side winding has a CT measuring the current flowing through the neutral and looking into the transformer. So again, if we have a Y grounded connection over here, we're saying that we're gonna have a CT over here measuring the neutral current and the polarity of that CT is such that it is looking into the transformer. Now, as I mentioned before, we can implement the REF element only on the low side winding since the high side isn't grounded. So the zone of protection would be between the neutral of the low side winding where the neutral CT is and the three phase line side CTs on that winding. So basically our zone of protection would be using this CT over here for the low side winding and you can see that that feeds all the way here into the transformer relay and the neutral CT over here. And then these would actually go, let me just redraw this. This would go into what we're gonna call an 87G element or the REF element. Sometimes the REF is just called a ground differential in other relays, SEL relays tend to call it REF. And again, just to summarize this, what we can do is create a differential zone that encompasses the neutral of the transformer where the neutral CT is here. And for this example, I'm gonna say that this is a 600 to five CT on the neutral. So between that CT and the three phase line side CTs on that winding. So this CT is over here, which are the 5,005 CTs on the low side transformer winding. Now the neutral CT will measure the current flowing from the neutral point and through the transformer low side winding for ground faults. We can then also use the calculated zero sequence current measured by the three phase line side CTs on the low side winding and compare the two currents, which in essence, what it does is it creates a differential zone that again goes from the neutral of the transformer on the low side winding to the three phase line side CTs on that winding, in this case, the low side winding. And again, this works for ground faults only, which is why this element is oftentimes called a ground differential element. So one important thing here is that the current that is being measured by this low side CT, the relay is gonna calculate the zero sequence current from the three phase currents. And then that's what it's going to compare to the neutral current. It's not gonna be using the phase currents, it's just gonna take the three phase measurement, calculate the zero sequence current from that, and then compare that to the neutral current. So again, in this way, we can detect ground faults on the low side winding of the transformer, and we can make sure that we don't trip for external faults outside of this differential zone, since we know that the zero sequence current that flows through the three phase line side CTs must be coming from the neutral. All right, so that's the overall setup. Now let's go into the instruction manual to see a little bit more about the details of the REF element in the SCL487E relay. So I'm gonna open up the instruction manual, and it's this one that I have over here. And let me actually go to page two, 106, and here's where we have the REF element section. Now looking here on the instruction manual for the ASCL 47E relay, we can see the operating characteristic of the REF element over here. 
And as you can see, what it really does is it compares a reference quantity, which in this case is a line side three phase CTs for the low side one of the transformer with an operating quantity in this case being the neutral current. Now, one important thing to note here is that this characteristic is actually different from the phase differential elements characteristic, which has a dual slope characteristic, at least here on the SEL487E relay. But you can see that this characteristic is actually different. So don't confuse the operating and restraining quantity terminology commonly used for the phase differential element with the operating and reference quantity terminology we are using here for the REF element. This is different from the phase differential element. So again, on the phase differential, we talk about operating and restraining quantity. Here, we're going to be talking about operating and reference quantity, but they're two different elements. So when I say operating quantity here, it's not the same as the operating quantity in the phase differential element. This is going to be a completely separate protection element from the phase differential element. Now, another important point that the instruction manual makes over here is that since we're working with zero sequence currents and not phase currents, the relay must be able to measure the zero sequence current from the three phase line side CTs. Again, remember that I mentioned that the three phase CTs on the low side are being used to measure the zero sequence current flown through the low side. Now because of this the three phase line side CTs need to be connected in a Y configuration because otherwise they would filter out the zero sequence current. Now also notice over here that the scl 47 e has dedicated single phase CT inputs for the REF function. For this example we're going to be using the IY1 input over here. So these three inputs over here again are dedicated single phase inputs for the REF function. And then the last thing that I want to point out over here is that unlike the phase differential elements, for this REF element, the default settings in the scl 487 e are often just fine. We don't need to do any extra calculations like we do for the phase differential element. All the really needs to know in general is the CT ratios for all the CTs, of course, including the neutral and the line side three phase CTs. And then we can use the default settings for the REF element. That's often okay to implement. All right, so let's jump into the settings file and let's see how we can configure this REF element in the settings file. All right, so what I have over here are just default settings for the scl 47 e relay. And in here, of course, I'm gonna be focusing only on the REF elements. But of course, if you were to use these settings for real life applications, you would need to set all the other protection elements and trip equations, output equations, basically all of the other settings. In this example, I'm just gonna be focusing on the REF element settings. Now, the first thing that we need to do, of course, is to configure the CTs. So again, we have a neutral CT and the line side CT. And we saw in the example before here on the example substation that we have a 5,000 to five CT on the low side, and then we have a 600 to 5 CT on the neutral. And just for the sake of completeness for the settings, the high side CT is 400 to 5. And then again, like I mentioned in the instruction manual, we're assuming here that we're going to be using the IY1 single phase input for the REF element. In other words, the neutral CT that we're using for the REF element is going to be wired into this IY1 input. And then one last thing, we're gonna assume that the high side CTs are gonna be wired into the S terminal. So this is gonna be the high side. And we're gonna assume that the low side CT is the 5005 that we're gonna be using for the REF element. That's gonna be wired to the T terminal. So this is going to be the low side. All right, so jumping back into the settings file again, this is default. SEL 487E settings. Here we can go to group one, set one, and let me expand this. And then we go into relay configuration. And here's where we enable the CT terminals, the PT terminals, which elements are part of the differential element, how many REF elements we want to set, how many overcurrent elements, that kind of stuff. So basically just general configuration that tells the relay what kind of protection we're using. And again, here I'm just focusing on the settings that are needed for the REF element. So the first thing would be this setting over here, ECT term. This is telling the relay what terminals have CTs wired to them. And again, here we said that we're gonna have the S terminal on the high side CTs, the three phase CTs on the high side, and the T terminal on the low side, three phase CTs. So we can leave that at the default setting, which is S and T. Then we can go down here to EREF. This is a setting that tells the relay how many REF elements we're going to be implementing. In this case, we're just gonna have one, which is for the low side winding. So I can set this to one. And now we can go over here to current transformer data, because of course we need to configure our CTs. Again, here the S terminal is the high side CT. That is a 400 to five CT. It doesn't matter for our example, for the REF element, but just for completeness, I'm gonna fill that out. So that's gonna be 80. 
which of course is 400 divided by five. And that is wired in a Y configuration. The T terminal, which is the one that we're gonna be using, again, this is for the low side CT, that we said that was a 5,000 to five CT, so that's gonna be 1,000 to one. And again, this is important. As I mentioned before, that CT is a three-phase CT that needs to be wired in a Y configuration. Otherwise, it would filter out the zero sequence current that the relay needs for the RUF element. So this, again, of course, is gonna be just why we're gonna leave that at the default setting. This is just the type of connection for the CT. And then lastly, we can scroll down here to CTRY1. This again is the single phase CT input for the REF element. In other words, the neutral CT is gonna be wired into this single phase element. And we said that for our example, that was 600 to five, so 120 to one. And so now we've configured the current transformer data. Now we can go to the REF element settings. That's gonna be here under restricted earth fault elements. And the first thing that we need to do is to select the restraint quantity for the REF element. What this is, is basically telling the relay which current are we comparing the IY1 current input to. And again, the IY1 input is the neutral CT on the low side winding in our example. So the reason why they really needs this, of course, is because it has multiple CTs wired to it. In this case, we have the high side CTs wired to the S winding, the low side CTs wired to the T winding in the relay, and then the neutral, again, is the IY1 single phase input. And of course, here we could have more CTs for other examples. So for example, if we had a three winding transformer instead of two windings, we might be using the S and the T and the U terminals in the relay. In this case, we just have two, so S and T. And so we need to tell the relay which one of these two three phase line side CT inputs to compare the neutral CT to. So we're just gonna set this REF RF1 to T so that we compare the neutral current to the T-terminal zero sequence current. And one more point here is that notice that we only have one REF element enabled over here. The REF element for the IY2 input is grayed out. So we just have one enabled because we enabled just one REF element and the relay defaults to just enabling the first element, the IY1. So it's important that if we intend to only use one REF element, that we wired the neutral CT for that winding into the IY1 input, because when you set EREF to one, the relay defaults to using the level one. Now you could, of course, if you had it wired to the IY2 input, what you could do is you set the REF element to two. So EREF equals two, set this one to off, the number one, and then use your settings for the level two and enable that one. But that just complicates things it's always better just to use the IY1 input if you're using just one REF element. Now again, for our example, the low side line side CTs are connected to the T winding of the relay, so that's why we set this to T. As I mentioned before, we can just use default settings for the pickup, that's often more than okay. This equation over here tells the relay when to enable the REF function. For our example, we want that to always be enabled, so I'm just gonna leave that to one. And then we have these two elements, REF 50P, and REF 51P1. These are basically just overcurrent elements that you can implement that use the neutral CT that is wired, in this case, to the IY1 terminal. So if you want to implement just a simple single phase overcurrent element that uses the neutral CT, you could do that over here. But this is separate from the REF differential protection. So I'm just gonna leave that to off. And basically this is all that we need to do for our REF element. Now, lastly, of course, we've programmed the REF element, but we would need to program the output of the REF element logic into a trip equation and into an output contact of the relay that would then trip the transformer lockout relay or just the transformer breakers independently. But all this does up to this point is we've enabled the element. We need to map that element to a trip equation and to an output. And for that, we need to know what relay Warbit is going to assert when the relay declares a fault in the REF zone of protection. So to do that, we can go to the instruction manual and let's go to page 209. And here we have the logic for the REF element, basically just the internal logic for the REF function. And you can see here that the output when the relay declares a fault in the differential zone of the REF element is this relay Warbit over here. REF F1. That's of course in the way that we've configured our REF element where the CTs are looking into the transformer. So that's just another important point. That's why I mentioned originally that this CT over here for the neutral CT needs to be wired looking into the transformer such that an internal fault is seen forward by the REF element and then we use this relay orbit over here. 
Now this is the really word bit that we would use to program into our trip equation and then program the trip equation into the output contact that trips a transformer lockout relay or just the breakers. We could use two output contacts, one for the high side breaker and one for the low side breaker. But basically again, we need to program this really word bit, REFF1, that's gonna be asserted, so a logical one, when they really declares a fault in the REF zone of protection, and then we would use that, program that into a trip equation, and then the trip equation into output contacts. All right, so that's how you implement an REF element using the SEL487E relay. If you wanna learn more about power system protection and control, check out our online courses where we go into these topics in a lot more detail. And as always, make sure to like the video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to the channel for more videos about power engineering and power system protection and control, and we'll see you in the next one.